gold goes down on inflation. Why doesn't the industry know this? So this is one of the con uh, common and wrong conventional wisdoms. So the, the conventional wisdom, just so you understand it, is that gold uh, protects you from inflation. So if we get high inflation, gold sh should go up. You know, it's a it's a physical substance. It's not a not traded, so it should maintain its value when when the you know when we get high inflation. So it should protect you from that. So therefore, if you add some gold to your portfolio, it reduces the risk supposedly that's 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 the kind of thinking so the problem with that is it's not true and you know it hasn't been true for decades so why does the industry keep, keep believing this old conventional wisdom and i'll give you a simple example so um you know gold a couple of years ago uh august of, of 2000 uh, was well so over 2000 for the first time broke its all-time record so um, so it's supposed to move the opposite of inflation. So that's where gold was at the all-time high. Where it was inflation at the time? It was basically zero. So no, no inflation. So what's the opposite? Now this year in 2022, we've got the highest inflation in uh, in uh, about 30 years. It's about you know eight nine percent inflation. You know governments and and uh, central banks have kind of lost in, uh, control of inflation here. And where is gold? Gold's fallen back to 1600. So it went down when we finally have this big high inflation. So see, there was no protection there for you at all. So. What, so what do we do about this? Why do they have the wrong view? And how can this help you with your portfolio? So now let me show you some data here. So, okay, so here is the correlation. Just want to show you gold. This is, uh, I've run this correlation, you know, many different times over the last couple of decades, different time periods, it's just to see what's happening. And, uh, you know, the correlation between gold and inflation. So now just so you understand what correlation is, Correlation shows you how, whether two th different sets of uh, numbers move in the same way or not. Okay, so correlation of one means they move exactly the same. A correlation of negative one move, means they move exactly the opposite. And then a correlation of zero, or let's say you know plus or minus twenty, between minus twenty and plus twenty is is basically no correlation. Means they just they're not really related to each other. So now, so here is the last four years, 2018 to 21. You see, this is what gold has done here. And this is inflation, but down and gone up. Gold was up and it went down. So the correlation has actually been minus seven, six. Now the conventional wisdom is that it's a positive number, a high positive number, but it's actually been into high negative number the last few years. So now let's go back to a longer period of time. So this is all the way from 1975 to last year. And, um, and you look at you look at the data here, and basically it's been six percent. So that way that would be considered no correlation, no correlation at all. So uh, so most of the time, what happens is inflation has been you know relatively flat, is doing not much, and gold is bouncing around, and whatever moves are just really kind of unrelated to each other. Uh, and now the only thing is, of course, you know this last year where you see inflation jump up, and then you know uh, or gold uh, inflation jump up and gold went down. So. So that so long term, there's been essentially no correlation at all, no no protection. However, in these big moves, it's been it's been the other way that that move the opposite. So now, so you understand why? What actually happens is, see, gold. Um, the reason you get this is it's actually the the actual correlation, the actual issue is got to do with interest rates. Okay, so gold doesn't pay anything at all, right? This is there's a penalty for owning gold because it doesn't pay dividends or interest or anything. So when interest rates are high, then there's a bigger penalty for holding for holding gold because it doesn't pay you anything, right? That that's got to make up for. Now, so there probably would be a correlation with gold and inflation if we had high inflation and didn't have high interest rates. So, but when does that ever happen? You know, the central bank specifically will raise interest rates when inflation is high. So, so that's why I mean, there is some logic. The, the logic to it is that it's uh, that the, is that uh, gold is a physical substance. So, but in reality, it's the interest rates that seem to to have the opposite effect for it. So that's, that's and that's. But overall, there's not really that much correlation. Gold is mostly speculative and changes moves on a few different things. Inflation moves up and down what's happening in the economy and various factors. So really, there is no correlation long, long term. So now the question is, why doesn't the industry know this? Like this has been, you know, this is 
it hasn't been correlated for decades. So, and why does the industry kind of keep persisting in believing this wrong thing? And I think part of it is, is it's just been said so long by so many people. And there is this, there is an underlying logic to it that they can, that they can explain, you know, being a physical object. So, um, but it's like so many of these conventional wisdoms, they're just wrong. They're just actually not true. So now what it does for the investment industry is, so, you know, the investment industry, they don't do, financial planning so they don't have that you know in-depth relationship with you and helping you achieve your life goals they're just doing the investing and therefore they need to constantly show that they're doing something you know short term that they're adding some value okay so what 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 do this does is if you have gold in there or some precious metals then it's a useful thing if they want to do some short-term market timing they can say that they put some in gives you diversification reduces your risk and so it sounds like it's a smart thing to do and that's why they you know they will kind of like to use it now and then as part of a um and also it's when they think it works but that's just kind of how it's used and it's probably why it's persisted so but really it's uh it's this kind of this weird thing weird thing that it, it's you know it's one of the conventional wisdoms that most people believe and just is not true so uh now uh so there's an old saying it's not what uh it's not what you don't know that'll kill you it's what you do know that's wrong or that just ain't so so and this is one of those so now i had a video um, or an article i guess a couple of years ago about how to easily outperform the investment industry and this is actually one of those places that we can do it so um, what happens is the investment industry tends to do a few systematically uh, systematic things that bring down your rate of return and having things like gold and bonds out of the low rate, rate of return items in there uh, is one of the main uh, things that they do. So they're trying to get diversification, but really they end up dragging down their return. So now what we're looking for, the way to easily outperform investment advisors and robo-advisors and, and indexes, basically is you're looking for something that, that gives you reliable long-term growth, okay? And really the only thing that really does that, the main thing is the, is the stock market. I'll show you that in a second. It does really give long-term growth. Now, most um, asset allocation, what happens is they put several different assets in that are all supposed to group differently. And the problem is that it's, you know, one with high growth and a bunch with lower. So for example, stocks and bonds and cash, usually let's say stocks and average, you know, eight to 12, let's say conservatively eight, Bonds, you know, average maybe three or four to say conservative, let's say four. Um, and bonds, you know, one or two or three or whatever, or cash one or two or three. Uh, gold is probably also similar to inflation, maybe 2%, 2 percent, two to four percent is a long term growth. But then so the question becomes, if you're going to put them in your portfolio short term, you, you, you know, you think, oh, it might reduce your your volatility. However, long term, all you do is you look at the long term rates of return because things work out. What's the long term reliable growth you can anticipate? So let's say uh, stocks is eight, bonds is four, uh, cash is two. So the question is, how many eights and fours and twos do you want in your portfolio? And gold would be one of those, a two or a four or something like that. So it's going to obviously drag it down. So now what the investment industry does is they focus on what I call the wrong risk, which is short term, short term volatility of the market instead of the right risk, uh, which is re how reliable your long term return is. So, you know, and, and it's a financial plan that does it for you. So you have a financial plan that says, for example, you need to make 8% a year for the next 30 years or as an average return to achieve your life goal, your retirement, and, and, uh, and um, uh, anyway, to, to get the, the nest egg that you need for the retirement that you want for financial independence. So you need 8% a year, okay? So now a short-term, uh, the, the investment industry defines risk all as short-term fluctuation. So if your investment, if your investment go down by 20 or 30%, like this year, they're down 20, 25%. So, they call that risk. However, you know what? Over the long term, as financial planners, we look at your plan and your life and we think long term. And it's not really risk because if it, if it falls 20 or 30 percent and then recovers, that's not risk. Right. Because it didn't affect you over time. What effect what risk is to me is uh, your your plan is based on your life, your plan. 
uh, your long-term, your plan says you need to make 8% a year. So whatever reduces your chances of getting the 8% a year or, or the likelihood of it, that's risk. So, you know, a short-term de uh, decline that recovers is not risk. However, if you add, you know, bonds and cash and gold in your portfolio, that those are likely going to have quite a bit lower long-term rate of return. And that gives you a lower chance of achieving your life goal. So that's why I think adding them actually makes your portfolio a higher risk. So, and it's a financial plan. Having a financial plan is what tells you that. So you, we uh, we have a process called interactive financial planning. It's software that's very flexible and can, uh, so you set your goal and we can very quickly through quickly go through many scenarios with you to create what you actually want in your life. So, so you know, you say, what if I want to, what if I want to retire a bit earlier or I want more travel and retirement and we can figure out all the all these options. And then we, we also, once you have your plan, you know what rate of return you need to be able to get there. So now just to show you how things are happen. So it's a 200 year uh, st study. Uh, okay. And it's, these are returns after inflation and notice how consistent stocks are over the long term. Now, sh these are after inflation as an exponential graph. So you don't experience it this way, but stocks have actually been really constant. Look how close they are to this trend line through the whole time over long periods of time. And it's that way because you're investing in, big companies that have managements that adapt to whatever happens. So basically long-term they've done 7% real meaning after inflation. So let's say 7% a year after inflation. Let's see bonds, for example, have, you know, periods where they go down where they go up because they don't keep up with the, with inflation and, and rising and falling interest rates can, can affect them. And this is gold, you know, it's been up, down, up, down, up, down. And so it's not a reliable, it's not like we'd have knowing, no way of knowing what, what's, What's the value of gold going to be 25 years from now? So the stock market, based on history, will be between 7 and 17 times higher. Will gold be between 7 and 17 times higher? I have no idea. And that's why we wouldn't use it in the portfolio for that reason. Also, the rate of return is just, you know, really low. Like this is a dollar uh, has grown to 1.6 million after inflation, while it's only $3.64 for gold. Now, that's not really fair because gold didn't really, wasn't really, openly traded until the early 1970s. But still, the point is that it's just a far lower long-term rate of return. And it's also a much more uncertain rate of return. So, um, all right, so this is a final, this is a quote from Warren Buffett on gold. He's got such good, such a smart way of, you know, making things, uh, saying things in a clear, simple way. He says, gold gets dug out of the ground in Africa or someplace. Then we melt it down, dig another hole, bury it again, and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. Anyone watching from Mars would be scratching their head. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because he always thinks of gold as just, it's the yellow metal that sits there. It's not like investing in the stock market, which we're investing in a company that makes a profit and a management adapts to what they're what they're doing. So bottom line advice to you is don't get sucked into this. You should, you should have gold to reduce the risk of your portfolio or the short-term volatility. It's not going to protect you against inflation. Uh, it, now, it does have a bit of a, uh, a low correlation with the stock market. It's roughly, I have a long-term correlation of like minus 6%, which is basically no correlation with the stock market. That's Canada, that's global or US. So it's a, it's a, um, so it does kind of reduce your volatility a little bit, but it basically it would reduce your volatility kind of like having money in a savings account because the savings account doesn't fluctuate when the stock market does. But, you know, much lower long rate of return, it's going to reduce your long-term rate of return and therefore increase the risk that you don't achieve your life goals. So, all right, thank you for listening. And again, if you like this video, please uh, you have my uh, uh, my YouTube channel and my blog. All you, if you sub subscribe subscribe to both, all that happens is you'll get an email once a week. I'm trying to do one every Thursday, and you'll just get to see whatever my new new videos are. Um, and also, if you want to talk to us, there's uh, just on my blog. You can ask for a free 30 minute consultation just to see um, to see whether or not it makes sense for us to work together. So thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.